How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 78 of Park 2 Primera. We are back. It's a whole new season. We have the same old racing, though. And, uh, well, I hope you're looking forward to another year of action. Last season didn't quite end the way that we wanted, but make no mistake, it was a monumental achievement to win La Liga. It was our sixth season in the league. No, fifth season in the league. Makes it sound even more impressive, doesn't it? And, of course, we ran out victors. Today, we kick off our quest to try and retain the title in this season number nine. Now, over the last couple of episodes, we have, of course, had a transfer special and then a Spain episode. I don't know what to call it. We're, we're now Spain manager. If you didn't get that memo, blimey, go back and watch yesterday. Um, since then, we've done nothing in the transfer market, really. Um, the only departures have been loans, and they've been players who I've loaned out who I just couldn't register, but I kind of just want to keep around because I'm just stupidly sentimental. So yes, Hardy is going to go and play for Marseille in uh, Liga. Elsewhere, we've got Vega leaving us. And also KK Vegas did try and sell him. He's in the last year of his contract. No one wants to pay his wages, so we've loaned him out to Pontevedra. But of course, it's always an interesting time going into a new season. And today's first game is no exception. We are going to be taking on Atletico Madrid away from home. If we just have a little look at the season preview here, you can see Ramadani, he's now considered the best goalkeeper in the league. I think that's pretty neat. Elsewhere, Gallini has, from out of absolutely nowhere, snuck in as a star player. Of course, we signed him last episode. I've taught him to play right back. He picked it up very quickly. Of course, he's actually a player we've really signed for the bench. A little bit confused as to why he's in the media Dream 11, but we're not going to question it. Elsewhere, of course, Captain Fantastic Sandro Tonali, who was, uh, well, very nearly the hero, shall we say, of the Champions League final last year. He's in the media Dream 11 alongside Hannibal, who, of course, has got a very, very big year ahead of him. He set his standards far too high to realistically maintain them going into this year but we're going to give him a chance to see if he can match it. And well, if we actually look at the league season preview, you can see here we have actually jumped ahead of Barcelona this season, which is really, really cool to see. In terms of the transfers that have been going on this season, if we just sort by the fees, you can see here kind of some of the bigger spenders. Atletico Madrid signed Mark. Yes, remember Mark, our right back Mark. He went to Chelsea for 28 million. He's now playing for Atletico Madrid. I feel... A small amount of betrayal with that. It'd be interesting to see if we play him today. Elsewhere, of course, we looked at it last time, but Jougon has signed for Real Madrid. I think that's how you'd say it. It's a French name. He's very good. 21 years old, perfectionist. One of the better centre mids you're going to see in Football Manager all year, I think it's fair to say. Although, in order to sign him, they did sell Pinteus to uh, Bayern. I will say now, I think they've probably signed a better better player than the one they've let go there, Real Madrid. So the net game for them is good. Elsewhere, Rosas was signed uh, for Real Madrid, a player who I'm not that familiar with. I don't know, where does he start? I'm curious now. Does he... Uh, no, okay, he starts at Real Sporting. Watford signed him. He then went to Bayern. He then went to Benfica. He's now moved to Real Madrid. Interested to see what he can do. He's been one of the bigger uh, additions in the league. To be honest, there's not been a huge amount of money spent, and you can kind of see why... Barcelona are down in third, I feel like. They've not really strengthened their team this year. Sewell is the one addition they've made. Interesting to note, he was a player who was on my radar during the summer. I don't think I showed him in the transfer special, but I looked across at him and I saw he was available for around 8 million. They've signed him for 7.25. Might end up being an inspired bit of business. He's very much a specialist winger, but he is a good little player. But really, going into this year, I want to win the league again. That is... And aim. My expectations, I would love to give Real Madrid a really good fight. I don't think we can expect a repeat of last season. Of course, it was a really, really good year. 98 points total was a crazy, crazy total that would have won the league pretty much any other year in recent memory. We were really, really good. It wasn't so much about Barcelona and Real Madrid not performing and more so, I suppose, our own performance. I guess the pressure is on us now to maintain that level of performance with the same squad. And while looking at the squad for the season, we're in a very good little position, I feel like. We've got our best 11 set up. We also have a completely rotated 11 that we can revert to if needed. Um, this year, I want to try and blend the 11s a little bit more. Last year, I kind of played one or the other. I'd like to give Calderon more opportunities with the first team. Um, similar story, I guess, with Guk Denise and Avramides as well. I don't want it to kind of be very 
I guess, separated the two 11s. I want to I wanna see a bit of mingling, you know? I don't want it to be like at a wedding where there's two groups, you know, of people who just don't know each other and they just, you know, stay in their little bubbles. This year, we're mingling. And, uh, well, we're not playing this team today, so let's just get rid of this real quick. We are, of course, playing this, although we have got some changes to make. And, in fact, Tussar, who we signed as, uh, well, one of our new additions to the squad, one of only three new first-team players, he's going to come straight in for his debut today, because sadly for us, Kapanu is suspended. He's been a very, very naughty boy. Elsewhere, Siapina got injured during pre-season, which is a bit annoying. He was out of the back strain for a few weeks. He is, however, back and fit to play 75 minutes today. So we're going to take a chance on him. I think one of the, the most interesting things that I came away with you know, from this summer was the fact that we didn't really have that many bids on our players. Besides the players that I offered out, like Corridor and like Velez, at the start of the transfer window... There wasn't any kind of cra crazy late business going in for players where I had dilemmas to make. I say all of that. There are a couple of players wanted, like Siapina, like Avramides. I mean, there's some quite big names, aren't there, on that list? But unless a monumental offer comes in, I really am not... I'm not even going to consider selling them. Not at this point. I hate selling players once the season has started. I feel like you kind of set yourselves up for defeat when you start doing that. In terms of the tactic for this year, one minor change. You may remember, we've talked about it before. Last year, we had an inside forward on the left. This year, we're going to be playing Conce Sao as a winger out on the left. He, of course, arrived on a freebie from Real Madrid. I'm hoping he's going to prove to be an inspired bit of business. Gentle reminder, uh, he is the joint highest earner at the club. So he better bloody perform. Otherwise, I'm wasting a lot of money on someone who's not that great. Now, before we leap into the first game of the season, it's always nice to just look at the club vision and, well, refresh ourselves on what the expectations are. This year, they want the first knockout round of the Champions League as a minimum. My personal goal, I want to make it to the semi-final, at least. That would be my main aim. In terms of league goal, they want us to finish top three and secure a Champions League spot. They don't care about the Super Copper. Worth noting, the board want me to win La Liga next year. Now, I'd love to do it. I think that's probably my aim as well, to be fair, next year. But that does apply a little bit of pressure on us, especially with our contract expiring only the very next season. Uh, imagine if this series just ended with me getting sacked because I don't win the league. I, I, don't, I don't want to imagine that. In terms of the manager highlights, you can see here, they are delighted with the new signings. Of course, we've got Gianluca Petrozuolo. Not got a nickname for him yet. Keep them coming in. Uh, and elsewhere, you can see they were very ha happy with the Tommy Howgard signing. He was one of the Danes that we randomly shot and, uh, well, signed. I, I say shot, that sounds awful, doesn't it? What I mean is we, we have a shotgun approach with our youth. We've kind of, we've got the shotgun out, taken a shot. One of the pellets has landed on him. So I've shot him, decided to sign him. Now he's joining us. I don't know if me explaining why I've said I've shot him makes it better or worse, really. Anyway, in terms of team selection for today's game, here is the squad in all its glory. Of course, that one change we've already mentioned, Tussar is going to make his debut today. Elsewhere, Petrozuolo and Conceição, two players who are going to be starting and hopefully having an impact on their debut. Away from home against Atleti is traditionally not a very easy game. The good news is really that we go into this with a mostly full fit squad. And, well, we're going to just desperately hope we can kind of maintain the level of performance we had last year. I do feel like last year was an overperformance of the players at our disposal. But given the fact we've done it once, I want to believe we can do it again here. Atleti, though, they're going to be coming into this ready and refreshed, determined to start their season with a win. It's not going to be very easy, although they have got Gwenduzi in their team. Maybe that, maybe that makes it easier. Also, Mark, he is playing for them. He's making his debut. I hate it. Elsewhere, of course, we've got three new debutants in the team. One thing I didn't mention, Sandro Tonali signed a new deal with the club very recently. Um, there was a bit of interest coming in from Italy. I don't want to lose my captain, so he has joined us for another five years, which is quite a long time when he's 28 now. I just realised I was still on extended highlights from the cup final. That stings a little, doesn't it? Okay, first highlight of the game. It's going to be a free kick on the edge of our area. Ramadani might be called into action earlier as Illich is going to hit it. Oh, my word. He bent it well. Good stop by the goalkeeper. And, uh, well, we live to fight another day. And another day has come. Eight minutes into the game. Pedro Porro threaded through superbly. Whips it in. Conceição. Goal on his debut. That makes me a very, very relieved and happy man. One winger linking up with the other winger. Of course, that is a change that we've ended up doing this year. I'm hoping that... Um, it's going to work out for us. Traditionally, I found that when we had the winger on the right and the inside forward on the left, the winger always performed better. So it seems logical with Conceição's arrival. 
why not play with two wingers and see how they link up? And, well, <laughs> um, we're only 10 minutes into the first game. I'm not going to get too carried away. One has assisted the other. I feel like that bodes quite well. Anyway, Atleti actually have the ball here in a bit of a dangerous area, although Hannibal is going to win it. Goes to Estevez. Petrozuolo, of course, only 19 years old. He is but a child. So, uh... Yeah, he's got a bit of learning to do, perhaps, the young centre-back, but we've brought him in because of his current ability. He is a very, very capable individual. Hopefully, he's going to play well for us, and, well, hopefully, this chance can amount to something. Estevez to Porro, who already has one assist. He goes down, but back to Thomas Estevez. Whip the way of Conce Sao, who's battling away for it. It's blocked away once. Some desperate defending by Atleti. Tonali maybe going to keep this chance alive, or, or maybe not. Elsewhere, Real Madrid have gone a goal down. I don't, want, I don't want to get too excited. It'd be very, very good if Real Madrid dropped points in the first game of the season. I noticed it was a Mepham own goal as well. Conte Saldo misses a crucial ball there, and then he's just given away a penalty. He's just given a... I mean, it was going too well, wasn't it? It was, go, it was going too well. Oh, Conte Sal. Why? Also, can we get a skip button for this in Football Manager next year? FM22 skip button for VAR? I'd really, really appreciate it, Sports Interactive. Is it going to be given? It is going to be given. Conte Sal from hero to zero. Atleti with a chance to draw even here. It's going to be Esposito over the ball. We're looking at Ramadani. He's in the Media Dream 11. Can he prove to us why he's in the Media Dream 11? No, he can't. Ball finds its way into the bottom corner. To be fair to Ramadani, he went the right way there, but the, the penalty was hit well into the bottom corner. I don't think he could have got there no matter what. Wasn't. A million miles away, though. And uh, Atleti draw even here. Eight minutes left to the half. Is that going to be how we go in at halftime? Am I going to have to get a little bit shouty-shouty? Or is there... I mean, we might have to get even more shouty-shouty. They've got to throw in in a dangerous area here. In my mind, I was only thinking about the possibility of us going back into the lead. If they score again here, we are in trouble. I am going to be angry. And I think Esposito just flicked that in through his legs. It was a filthy finish. That was really, really dirty. And with that, Atleti take a 2-1 lead. Ah, Gwenduzi to Ferran Torres, Ahmed. And was this a flick in? Uh, maybe, I can't tell from there. Um, who was marking? Uh, I, no, we're not going to click on who was marking because I know who it was and it was a new signing. Okay, so at the break, we are 2-1 down. And to be fair, we deserve to be 2-1 down. We've not really been good enough in this game. I'm going to throw a water bottle. Some people might call that an overreaction. I think it's necessary. Hannibal and Petrozuolo are in tears. They'll get over it. Corner for Atleti. Whipped in towards the near post. Tonali gets it away, but Moray still with the ball here. Conce Sal picks it up. Could we spring a counter-attack? The pacey left winger has a lot of green grass ahead of him to roam into. Players queuing up in the middle as well. Can he pick one out? No, is the answer. That was a disappointing ball at the end of that run. There was so much build-up to it. He ran so far. The anticipation just... Went up and up and up and it amounted to nothing, although we still have it here. Pedro Porro skips past his man. Can we find it into the middle where there are lots of players waiting and he's decided to shoot because of course he has. Straight into another highlight though, which has caught me out. Maybe, maybe there's more to this. Atleti, goal kick, given away. Siapina, really dogged effort to get there. Can he finish it? Of course he can. Renato Siapina didn't have his best year last year, maybe a little bit quiet. It's not a bad way to kick off his season. And, uh, well, I thought when the initial chance was squandered by Pedro Porro, maybe that was that. Heck, even when Ciapino won the ball here, I, I don't know. I didn't think he'd actually go through on goal and score. There was just, you know, two defenders back, but he's managed to get past them both, and it's a really tidy finish into the bottom corner. It makes it 2-2. Game on. You can see, looking at the stats here, we've not been that much better in the second half. I might have to look to make some subs sooner rather than later. I feel like that goal for Ciapina has kind of painted over the cracks, perhaps a little bit. Although, let's, let's not panic. Let's not react too rashly here. We've still got the ball, and it's Hannibal with it. Clean through, should finish it, would have finished it last year, this year. I don't know if that was saved or if it hit the post. It's not ended up in the back of the net, though. Right, you know what? Let's make some changes here. Tussar on a booking scares me. Taliso can come in. Elsewhere, Pedro Porro's done okay, but I am going to bring in Avramides out on the right. And I was told Ciapina shouldn't play more than 75 minutes. But I'm going to... When have you ever listened to a doctor? I mean, you should listen to a doctor, but when have you ever listened to a doctor? I'm ignoring them. He's staying on the pitch at least for now. 
as, uh, well, Atleti have a chance. Sanderberg, edge the box, inside to Illich, who gave the ball away for our second goal. He's going to be looking to make amends. That ball there is not making amends. It goes straight down Ramadani's throat, and we're now going to look to build from the back. Big ball forward, headed away to Rafa Liao, who's playing weirdly out in a wide area. I feel like he's a striker, but I'm not going to question it. Petrozuolo, big win in the air. We love to see that. Avramides. Avramides, you have got to want the ball more than that there, mate, on the right-hand side. And, uh, well, want the ball... I was about to say he's going to get it, uh, but no, no, he's not. The ball goes to him and he heads it straight to them. Avramides, heading the game. Esposito, lumped through, through the middle. Huge save, Ramadani. Bails out Petrozuolo there, who was maybe guilty of losing his man. I mean, 15 minutes left in this game. We've not been great. What I would say is Atleti have not done anywhere near as much in this half. I'm going to take off Hannibal, and I'm going to bring in Calderon. Last sub of the game. Can Calderon make a difference here? Let's find out. Perez, Conceição, Calderon to Siapina, who is still on the pitch. I'm sorry to my physios. They must hate me. Conceição, Perez. Players queuing up in the middle. Conceição's there again. Back wide to Perez. Has so much time to pick out a cross. It's not a particularly inspiring one, and we have committed a lot of men forward there. Ferran Torres bringing the ball forward to Atleti. Thomas Estevez, though, reads it well. And while end-to-end -end stuff here is, well, tiring legs on both sides, maybe Calderon could be the man to inject some energy in the final third for us. Avramides, also fresh off the bench, stretching his legs, breaks through, hits it. I mean, that's, that is an Avramides finish if I've ever seen one. I feel like Avramides should be world-class, and he just isn't for me. And I don't really know what to tell you about it. Anyway, three and a half minutes left. A goal here for either team could make this game into a bit of a classic dare I say, with the fans as we're now into extra time. I'd consider it a classic if we win. If they score, it's not a classic in my eyes. And while Ferran Torres is in behind Perez, one-on-one, -on -one, Ramadani can't get there, but the woodwork comes to the rescue. My, oh, my, oh, my. That was scary. And you know what? Given how that's just played out, I I'm quite, quite happy it's finished 2-2, to be honest. Hmm, I don't know what to make of that. On the one hand, we've come back pretty well. On the other... That is a game I would like to win. Atleti, though, are a good team. We know how strong home and away advantage is. Petrozuolo is jaded and could do with a rest. We've just played the first game of the season. This is why I hate sending my players to the Olympics. They come back tired, and it's just not fair. Worth noting, in the other games in La Liga, Barcelona lost, and Real Madrid, where's Real Madrid? Real Madrid drew. So everyone else slipped up. So maybe a draw wasn't the worst result in the world. Real Madrid and Barcelona not starting out their campaigns particularly well. In fact, looking at the league table, there's a freakishly large amount of draws for the first game of the season. I mean, I'm looking at it now. They're, they're, yeah, lots of draws. No, not many teams winning, which I guess can only be a good thing, right? Anyway, gang, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, the honest answer is I don't really know. Um, we have got a game against Barcelona coming up. I think we've got some international games potentially on the horizon. I feel like we should do the first international games. They're coming actually in less than a month's time. So a chance for us to see what we're all about as Spain manager. Yeah, I think that's when we'll come back next time. We'll do a double header of the UEFA Nations League. Never before has the Nations League mattered so much, but... No, I want to leave a good impression on my debut as Spain manager and it'll be an interesting chance to find out. Hope you're looking forward to that. If you've enjoyed today's episode, as always, do drop a like on it. And until next time, here's me, Jack. And I'll see you all next time. I'm out.